Hey, 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 what's up, world? It's your boy T. Shrimp, everybody, fake baby daddy, voice of the street, man. And today we in. We go be in Miami with it, y'all. So we on the road to 20,000 subscribers, y'all. Help me get that. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It don't cost you nothing to subscribe. Now, today we're going to be talking about Rick Ross and his baby mama, Tia Kemp, y'all. Would you believe Rick Ross, y'all, put a hit on his baby mama? Yes, his own baby mama. He put a hit on her, y'all. And check this out. It must be some people they both knew. Let's say he dropped 10000 on them. Now, I don't know the dollar amount. I'm just filling y'all in on the story. Let's say he dropped 10000 on them. But he gets somebody that he know and she know. They took the money and kept it and went and told her, Hey, bitch, look, this nigga trying to kill you. He just paid me 10 stacks to kill you. But I'm not going to do you like that. But I'm just telling you, watch that nigga and stop fucking with it. You know, now it ain't like they were still kicking it or nothing. I'm talking about like irritating him or doing whatever she doing to make him mad. Now, she got dirt on him because Rick Ross already had dropped a few bags on a few people, and she knew it. You know how you're in a relationship, your baby mama know everything because it's really shit that be going on in the street, right? Would you believe he's supposed to have somebody else killed? And the reason he having people knocked off and stuff, because he gay, he been fucking with Diddy, uh, DJ Cali gay, and Puffy P. Diddy. Man, if y'all didn't get P. Diddy off the street, he was going to affect everybody. The whole music industry was going to be affected by Diddy. That's why he need uh, a thousand bottles of baby oil because he fucking everybody. And I mean everybody, I mean Everybody. Did he wake up? He don't know if he want a man or a woman. He wake up and look. Oh, damn, she looking pretty good. But damn, okay, now me, Mill, hey, me. Let me holler at you. You looking pretty good in them jeans, me. Come on over here. You got them skinny boy jeans on. And Meek went over there. Uh, he all fan, Meek. And if your big boss doing it, uh, yeah, he doing it. Yeah, I see why Meek went on right in there behind him. Yeah, man, he go give you a million dollars. You might as well. Your money getting low, nigga. Hey, hey. Now, this ain't me talking. I'm just saying what they said. You know, listen to this, y'all. They call it tea. We go call it wine since this the fellas. And I got women watching too, but... This not out. turned for a younger woman and others are also slamming her for sitting on this information for all these years and only spilling the tea after rick ross pissed her off one person said yeah she may get on here and do a lot and talk a lot of ish about him but maybe y'all didn't hear what she said rick paid somebody to unalive her instead they took his money and got the information to her i don't even care for tia but paying someone to unalive your child's mother but wouldn't even pay her child support is out of Pocket. Another mm. person said, and for all those calling her bitter and saying she's lying, I want to know this. There's no way on earth a man with everything to lose wouldn't sue her for defamation if what she's saying about him wasn't true. If not to win money, but to win legal silence. Now it's unclear when exactly Rick sent the hint out on her for her to be taken out by his people, but folks think it was just months ago when she exposed him for being Diddy's freak off partner. Yeah, y'all heard that right? A few months ago when Diddy's house got raided by Homeland Security, Tia jumped on IG Live and accused Rick of running to Miami to lay low for a while, cause he's scared that he might be next to be investigated after Diddy. According to Tia, Diddy has multiple tapes of Rick getting freaky at these parties, and he plans to turn everything over to the feds at the right time. You big my Well, I want you to talk, talk Don't be scared now. No Diddy, huh? You scared now, huh? I know y'all on them tapes. Freaky I know he is. Ten churn hat It's time to show them churns now. I ain't gonna let off you. <laughs> you should have been shut this big mouth hole up. You know it. You know it. Send me a proof, bad I'm mad right now, 
Can't hit me and my baby prom in two weeks. I'm finna go and let out. Turn it down, man. Turn it down. It's quiet right now. What you quiet for? Nobody wanna see your Louis outfits and sneakers. Nobody wanna see it. Nobody don't care to see the Jets no more. You running out of now. Go over there and get Diddy your hood. Go ride the bike with him, you fat. You know what time it is. Prom time. You ain't sent them a message since December 9th, you big fat. Since fat prom time. But I'm not finna play with you. I'm not. You gonna make me come to the gate, fat. You been in Miami a lot. Cause you ain't got no motions. It's slowing down. I heard. I heard you fat. I heard. I'ma get you, Will. I'ma get your I'ma get universe. Do your work. Honeybook keeps your proposals, mm. contacts, invoices, and all in one place. My name is Laura. You know if you rich, you should take care of your baby mama, man. Friends. So trust That's all it is. You're supposed to be taking care of her better than that. To work on that big, 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 and if you keep sending motherfucking messages around that's getting back to me, I'm going to come over here and tell it all. You be told, your to be told in next. You know what I'm talking about. This revelation from Tia was not a good look at all for Rick because people started digging into his affiliations with Diddy and they realized that he was also deeply tied to everything. In fact, he was even out here rapping with some of the women that he essayed and giving us details about how he successfully got away with it. The first song was called Magnificent and in this song, Rick blatantly rapped about witnessing Diddy essaying the members of a girl group that was signed to his record label at the time called total rick said i made a transition from the thieves to the biggest executive death jams ever seen the game never changed money's still a focal but it's time to essay the game like puffy did total even before we could fully process this bs 50 brought to our attention the lyrics of another rick ross song called uoeno in which he flat out bragged about essaying a woman like it was a flex he raps put molly all in her champagne she ain't even know it i took her home and i enjoyed that she ain't even know it 50 posted multiple photos of diddy and rick ross as well as a screenshot of the lyrics on his ig page and captioned it what the f at some point you just gotta do the right thing and do y'all remember the time that 50 posted this photo of diddy and rick ross seemingly about to kiss each other on the lips during a performance child the signs were all there y'all around this same time that all this was going on the interrogation video of the man who got up the trump national hotel back in 2018 started going viral and in the video there was some tea being spilled about rick and diddy he said he was one of diddy's freak off slaves and that rick ross big sean and dj khaled were some of the people who would come through and pound him he said he even caught some stds at one point but they kept sleeping with him Combs. Puff Daddy. Yeah. Diddy, whatever you call it. So, yeah. Diddy, yeah, go ahead. I had with Cassie and Sean. Basically, with the, he was mad. They told me what to do with Cassie. I was like a slave, okay? For them, that's what I was. That's all, all right? Um, I caught herpes, and I came back, and I sued for the herpes, and war. But, Diddy said Ross, which they good bodies, okay? Mm -hmm. They, they, they're gay. Who? Both. Diddy and Ross. And Cat. They're all gay. Okay? DJ Kelly, Rick Ross, and Diddy? Yeah. They're all gay? Yeah. Gotcha. Alright. I seem to look like I'm dragging myself. I was Diddy and Cassie. Okay? It's not good. He drinks all the time. Alright? He calls it Gigi. Let's leave it Hey, yikes. See, one thing about Tia Kemp, she may tell a joke, but maybe she never tells a lie. However, people still feel like she's part of the problem because she knew everything that Rick was getting up to and still decided to keep her mouth shut till it was convenient for her. Yeah, As usual, did. people had their own thoughts about this. Like this person who said she better realize withholding information is a serious charge and knowing too much can and will make you an accomplice. Well, Tina, you're trying to point fingers at Rick Ross, but you're just as guilty by knowing and not telling. 
you may be incriminating yourself. It's also called misprison of felony. Look it up. Another person said she owes him no loyalty when ordering hits on her. For the slow dummies on the short bus, I'm snitching too. But now I want to know your thoughts. What do y'all think about Tia exposing Rick Ross for unaliving all these people? And do y'all think she should also be charged as his accomplice for just sitting on all this information till now? Y'all been knew what to do. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And don't forget to click here to watch this other very messy video. Let me know what y'all think about that. I'm going to leave it in the description of that page and the uh, old girl name and everything. You know, but I, I had heard this once before. And I knew this is baby mama. Did y'all hear what she said, though? It's prom time. And you ain't sent me or my baby nothing. I'm like, damn, Rick. Now, see, these people be flossing so much. Act like they really filthy rich. I ain't saying they ain't. Rick doing good, I ain't saying he ain't rich. Maybe he just ain't got no compassion in his heart. You know, with 10 kids. I, but, you got money like that, you should be able to show some love. I don't care what, how much money you got. Baby mama should be cuffed and took care. I wouldn't have to send that bitch nothing. Because I would give her a credit card with no limit on it. And she ain't got to call me for no money. You ain't got to do nothing. I would have my accounts look. When she need money, take care. Period. That's it. Y'all don't get to call me. Give her a little account. And when she run it dry, even every day when you checking and you see it get low, you know if you can. If you making 100% of something, you can give her 2% of something. Which would be all right. It would keep her from begging and talking all on the internet. And the stuff she talking could get him locked up for real. She talking about two murders that he committed. One, he had a lady killed. Why? I don't know. And she said, you know that lady you had killed? Leaving my mama house after getting her hair dead? Then that other boy that y'all killed in front of Black House and don't believe, listen, there is no statute of limitation on murder. You hear me? I'm going to say that again. There is no statute of limitation on murder. That means if you kill somebody 20 years ago and they just find out, they can lock you up. See, it ain't what you know, it's what you can prove. And once they can prove it, they go come get you. Do y'all remember the Browns chicken murder? This is something happened almost 30 years ago. Or the people went in there, robbed this place, and killed seven employees. They took them to the freezer and they killed them. Unsolved, y'all, for years. For years. This guy told his girlfriend, she was his current girlfriend at the time. They broke up and something happened and she got mad. I'm talking about 30 years later, she told them people and they just went and got his ass up. That's crazy. It's another murder that's been unsolved for a minute. They call it the the Brian Lane Bryan's murder where somebody went and robbed and killed these women. They were all in a wedding store where you buy wedding dresses. Why would he rob and do that? I don't know. But they say it was one person. He went and he killed everybody in there. It was one survivor. It was a lady and she hid under the bridal racks. You know, she got up under one of them dresses and hid. He killed all the women that he seen. And he got up out of that. This nigga couldn't have told nobody nothing. You hear me? Nothing. They ain't caught his ass yet. But I hope he don't get drunk and slip. Or if he left a fingerprint, maybe see sometimes they, they can you can leave your fingerprint somewhere, but if you're not a criminal, they don't have your fingerprint, right? You fuck around and forget that and go get a job at the government. And they fingerprint you. And there you go. You burn up. You burn up. See, a lot of things happen to people because they don't even be knowing how things go.
Do y'all know when you go to the hospital, they run your name? If you got a warrant, they'll lock you up. Even when you go to the DMV to get a new ID, if you got a warrant, they'll lock you up. In Chicago, we got a, a holding cell down there on 99th, downstairs at the DMV. You know when you go down there to talk to the lady and uh, about your license and shit, if it's ever messed up, down in that basement, I don't know where it's at because I ain't never went, but I know they lock people up and that's where they take them down there. I ain't never had the pleasure of seeing the sales. Thank God I ain't never been that stupid to have a warrant and go down there. But, hey, it is what it is. Hit that like button, y'all. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know what y'all think about this, man. Diddy is swoo. Listen, y'all. If they gave R. Kelly 30 years, they might get Diddy about 90 years, man. Diddy got to get more than R. Kelly. He got way more evidence. Now, R. Kelly, to me, got railroaded through the court of public opinion. And he just had so much heat, and it was all over. So the state's attorney, even the judge, they just wanted to put him away. They like these high-profile cases, y'all. Don't tell me these judges don't like seeing themselves on TV. They watch YouTube like we do. They sit there and laugh at themselves. Look at this fool. Talking about he do not recall. You know, they sit and watch all this. Everything, they do it. Ain't nobody can say the judge can't watch what's going on on YouTube or whatever is in the media. So he likes seeing himself or the lady not in the YSL trial on the stand. With all the money they spend in trying to lock young thug up, y'all, I think it's a waste. It ain't like they're getting a big criminal mastermind off the street. Y'all getting a rapper with gang ties off the street. And the nigga who did the most dirt, uh, dirt y'all gave immunity to. So what kind of shit is that? Y'all go give immunity to a person that was allegedly a killer to get young thug. And he ain't pulled the trigger. He ain't the one pulled the trigger. He got the money in communicating with these guys. But that just goes to show you, man, when you getting clean money, you got to pull your feet all the way out the street. All you rappers out here that's rappers and want to act like y'all thugs or want to try to be tough and still doing things that niggas in the street doing because they got to do it. Y'all some damn fools. All of y'all. And I mean all of y'all. If y'all are entertaining anything that niggas do on the street and you got a million dollars legal money, you are a damn fool. You know what I mean? You got everybody else get their little money, go home, relax, get them something to eat, watch TV, turn on YouTube, whatever you're doing, get your woman, fuck her, whatever you doing, stay out of trouble. If you got a million dollars, bro, legal money, it's no reason for you to be in jail. You hear me? I'm going to say that again, bro. If you got a million dollars, legal money, it's no need for you to be in jail. You know? And then y'all need to realize this too. The police are haters. They be hating you. They don't like to see us making good legal money. So when they can catch you dirty, they go get on you. They see you pull up, you a rapper, y'all got 18, 19, nice cars, looking good. Their job is to pull you over. If they can find anything illegal in any one of these vehicles, y'all ass going to jail. I already said they go get Woody. Woody rubbing their nose in it. Listen, get your money is cool, but why are you flexing so much? I understand you never really had shit. But you flexing harder than the rappers now. You know, every time I turn on Instagram, you're standing on cars, you got money stacked up like this, and you're showing it off. You're supposed to be trying to keep it low-key, bro. You got immunity, and you damn snitch. So what? Okay. You talking about you don't want nobody bothering you. Why you can't get your money and lay low? 
Now, ain't nothing wrong with popping up on all these shows. Get that money. Yeah, get that. And lay back and relax. And people be like, man, we won't be seeing until I sent you on 21. Yeah, well, that's the only place y'all go see me. If y'all want to watch me, you got to turn on YouTube or something and see me. But I ain't out in the street just hanging out. Eventually, somebody go try you because they see you keep stacks of monies on you. You know, they're just silly. You know, it, it, it's really immature, but he is young. You know, everybody just stun it. We just stun it a little bit. Ain't nothing like that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But sometimes it is. You know, I done had days I done woke up. You feel like, some days you feel like stunning. Like, you, it's cool to stun on a Sunday. You know what I mean? You want to stun on a Sunday? Go, go ahead. I done been in situations where you be riding. I done been riding one day. It's like seven of us. Seven pretty cars back to back. I'm riding, we flexing. And I look in the mirror and I said, we look like a bunch of fucking drug dealers, bro. I'm like, we used to play the walkie talkies back then. I'm like, split up, bro. Split up. You know? You know what these fools did? Alright, we all gonna be meet at the beach, we gonna split up. One nigga jumped out, wanted to get a beer out of my trunk, jumped out. Get the beer, slam the trunk. The police said, do you know they chased us the hell down? Chased us down. And we had a few cars had to keep going because, you know what I mean, we dirty. But the trunk, we was getting the beer out of. We didn't have no straps in. You know why? Because I had all these niggas running. I'm, hey, I always protected me, you know. Whether I had a strap or not, I'm going to protect me. Even if I got all y'all niggas, I don't need the gun in this car. Huh? Put it in that one, bro. Y'all just in front of me, behind me, we doing what we do. Because you got to be the thinker. You don't want, hey, if I'm the boss, I don't need to go to jail, bro. That's their job. That's their job. You know, some of you guys getting money like that, you need to have somebody else get their hands dirty. Not true. Not true. And then once you're done doing that, get all the way out the way. See, this is basically what happened to Young Thug. He had too many people around him that want to get their head. Listen, ain't none of them niggas in YSL kept it solid. Maybe the few that's in the courtroom with him. Them niggas ain't told yet. But they fight murders and shit that they can't. Ain't nothing that they, they did the right on that one. Young Thug going to be getting less time out of all of them. Watch. He going to be the one get the less time out of all of them. All they've been doing is talking about what Woody did and everybody else. They ain't said nothing what Young Thug did. And furtherance of the gang for what? He already was rich. This is crazy, y'all. This is crazy. And then P. Diddy, oh, he let his dick get him in trouble. Come on, P. Diddy, I like pussy just as good as the other man. But maybe I ain't had that man, so maybe there's some new shit you on, and maybe it drove you crazy. Y'all think pussy drive you crazy. Lord have mercy. Look at all these niggas that's like that. We don't know what it is. Us heterosexual men, we don't know what it is. You got Puff Daddy, you got P. Diddy. Puff, I mean, P. Diddy ain't Puff Daddy, it's the same person, y'all. Yeah. But Meek Mill, Rick Ross, DJ Cali, all these men that's participating. Damn, what the hell is going on, y'all? Really? And then the Atlanta, oh, Atlanta like that. The women, I done heard a lot of women say, look, girl, these niggas is gay. A lot of them are, y'all. Yeah. I had a partner go down there. Rest in peace, Turk. Turk was down there. He from Chicago. And he just getting to know people hanging around. And somebody was talking. I guess they was in front of our house talking to some people. And somebody said, who was that? Oh, that's my babe right there. The nigga talking about my boy. I'm like, Turk, who was that? Oh, that's old boy be around the car. I said, that nigga just called you his babe. Yeah, I told that nigga about saying my boy turn around and <laughs> fired him up. I told you about saying that. I'm like, mm-hmm. That nigga started talking like that. 
Yo, bae. How the fuck he yo, bae, nigga? And hey, you serious? I said, you should have got on his ass first time he said it. You don't, you shouldn't have had to wait till me to hear it. I hear it. I'm like, that nigga just say, yo, bae, who the fuck is that? I'm like, and I know my man don't get out like that. Mm-hmm. Hey. Anyway, let me know what y'all think, man. It's your boy G. Shrimp. Everybody say, baby, daddy, what's the street? I'm going to plant you now and dig you later, man. I'm going to go jump job and hit the street, y'all. Shh. I'm telling nobody. Let's get my new dog. Get my suit out there clean. I'm going to put it on for y'all. As a matter of fact, tomorrow or the next video, I do. I'll let y'all see. I'll let y'all see, you know. I'll be trying to get spiffy. It's finna get cold, y'all. We could bust the mink coats out. I can get ready to bust the mink coat out in a minute, y'all. You feel me? Mink coat time, y'all. I'm out of here.